Hello, and welcome back to Dream Daddy on Playframe. Hooray, Dream Daddy. We are back again with more Craig messages and more dad dates. Yeah, why is it only Craig messaging us other I'm dads? I'm not sure. Maybe our other dads are less tech savvy. <sighs> hey, dude, I've got the runs. What? Hmm. Oh, I've got just the thing. I'll head to the store and grab you a really chunky milkshake, cherry licorice, and a book of word jumbles that I find helpful in strenuous times such as these. What? Wouldn't that make it worse? Oh, it's not for the diarrhea. Milkshakes are just comforting. Wait, why are we talking about this? Why, I've got the runs. I meant that I feel like running. Uh, that's not what that means, Craig. Want to come with me to the gym? I would rather drink a milkshake, Craig. Why do I feel less excited about that than getting you home remedies for diarrhea? Come on, man. It'll be fun. You know what? Sure. When are we doing this? There's 30 more minutes left in this meat hell marathon. I'm outside right now. I'm warming up. I might hate Craig. <laughs> I don't hate Craig, but come on, dude. Okay, okay. At least let me see if Betty gets away from the wolf, from the wolves in time to get her suppress. Wow, suppressata wrapped cheesecake out of the oven. I don't know what a suppressata is, or why wolves are involved. It's meat hell. But yeah, I guess that's these are just the things that happen in meat hell. Right. Pay your bills early. That's probably good advice. Then you, you don't end up with late fees. If you press the ignition too long, you'll end up flooding the oven or something. I missed it. Whatever. Mm. The gym just installed these new virtual logging treadmills. We'll it's, feel like we're running outdoors. It's... It's... We fit. It, yeah, it kind of is we fit, huh? Neat. I feel this weird urge to stand up and run on a little balance board. Haha. <laughs> oh, and they got a whole bunch of, like, the Grumps crew names on the side. We got Brent Aww. and Layton yeah. and Aaron. That's cool. That's awesome. Joseph, Craig. Ah, so us. just Joseph and Craig are the only other two dads that come here. <laughs> Apparently. Or Seems at least like. the only other two who run. Guess so. You can see the other runners on your screen too. Let's try it out together. Oh boy. Running time. Other runners? Will I be able to keep up? Dude. Don't worry, we're here to cheer each other on. I'll be right there with you. Mm-hmm. Just get a rhythm going. Keep your heart rate up, but don't overexert yourself. You'll do great. So you're saying walk. How do I Run even... Run that dad. Run that dad. Oh, look at you. You're running. Am I doing this right? It looks like it, yeah. You're keeping it like, uh... Keeping your energy up without totally overexerting yourself. I think you're doing great. It sort of feels like the fishing mini game. I thought that's Joseph. Oh, Stardew? it is Joseph. Aw. <laughs> oh no! Oh no! Eggplants. Oh. What am I doing? What am I doing? I guess you've got just sort of like a, a boost, a time when you were able to like infinitely run for a burst there. Oh. I did not understand that at all. Just a burst of energy, I guess, is what it was. From seeing Joseph. Yeah, probably. A burst of eggplant energy. Yeah. Oh, okay. That makes some degree of sense. Look at you go. My thumb's getting tired. <laughs> That's what happens when you jog. I really need to get back to doing, like, any degree of exercise, don't I? Oh, you're doing it right now. See, look at you go. Ah, look at you go. The speed. But for reals, my thumb. <laughs> I'm not lying. It's a good gaming workout. Ah. <laughs> I can't keep this up much longer. Help! You got this. Oh, you're on a beach. So relaxing. Nah! <laughs> Thumb! Dying! Ah! Please, 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 let's just get through all this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this gets quite the marathon, though. Right? Craig. 
Craig, come Craig, on. Craig, are we done? Please, can we be done? Please, can we be done? Craig. Please. I have to switch hands. Oh, well, yeah, try it. I did. There you go. It's better. But now oh. I'm playing left-handed, which... Ah, you're doing great. Look at you run. Look at me run. Look <laughs> at me. This is a cute little addition, because, yeah, this was not in the base game either. Right. It's cute, but much like in We Fit, feels a little bit um, samey after a while. Yeah, I kind of uh, Bro. probably would have recommended that they don't. Uh, oh, you're at the end, though. Good, 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 good. You got good, this! Good. Yay! Woo. You did it! Oh my goodness. Whoa. Whoa! And you rocked it, too. I didn't know there was something beyond S. For sure. Way to go! I would love to go further in the game, Daniel, but I can't press the button anymore. <laughs> no, I'll, I'll manage. Always bring a war Welcome. chest. You've got dads. Mm. Don't know what that means. Well, anyway, that went great. Yay! Now let's go on a date. I posit that we date a Robert next. A Robert's date, very well. Because we've done Brian and Joseph and Hugo. It's and true. that way we'll have all of this side of the screen that makes taken sense. care of. And then, yeah. That's as good a reason for choosing a date as any. Right? Robert dates Robert Small. When the internet gains sentience and decides to destroy all and destroy us all, you know it'll use this information against us, right? <laughs> of course. On a Friday night, he's most likely to make a deal in an alleyway. Have it go badly. Who's the cop? Was it Giacomo? I trusted Giacomo. <laughs> 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 if you had one thing to take with you onto a desert island, it would be a gun. <laughs> Why? What are his turn-ons? Don't talk to me. <laughs> what do you want to do? Be, what do you want to be when you grow up? A grifter. His favorite movie <laughs> genre, Italian neorealism. Hmm. His ideal date, grave robbing. What does he never leave home without? At least four knives. And he spends <laughs> a lot of time thinking about, you ever really look into a rabbit animal's eyes? <laughs> That's a really good one. <laughs> He's such a odd and distinct flavor. He certainly is. Let's get to know this odd and distinct flavor a little better. Sure. Ha. Huh. Dad tip 14 is shave with the grain. That is n not how it works when you're shaving your legs. <laughs> you shave against the grain. Ah. Uh, I don't know why it's different for faces and legs, but it I is. I don't either, actually. Robert was pretty nice. A little odd, but nice. And ruggedly handsome. We should hang out. I type out a message to him on dad book. Hey, Robert. Good seeing you at the cookout. Want to grab a drink? I sit there for a couple of seconds, hoping he'll message me back. Hey, it says he read my message. I anxiously wait for a response. Robert. <laughs> Ooh, hey. Well, if they're going to give us the option. Always watch cat videos on the internet. I start down a rabbit hole of cat videos, and Robert quickly vanishes from my mind. I didn't realize how long I've been doing this, but by the time I watch maybe my 30th cat video, Robert pa pops back into my head. I jump back over to Dadbook to see if he's responded yet. Nothing. Well, I guess the guy's busy. I might as well make the best of my day. I get up, walk to the living room, then sit down and turn on the TV. Maybe there you we go. can find more cat videos. Yeah. History channel, food channel, or game show. I feel like cats are most likely to show up on the history channel. I think you're right. Also ghosts. Cats and ghosts. Yeah. Sure. Ooh, naked and afraid. Catching the deadliest ancient aliens is on. Oh my goodness. I'm so cold. I'm so scared. At this rate, I don't think we're going to catch these aliens by day 50. I'm having trouble following this. Me 
ancient astronaut theorists predict that being naked makes you ten times more likely to find ancient <laughs> aliens. Some suggest that aliens are fascinated with the human physique, most notably the bot. Okay, I'm back in. <laughs> I lose several hours to whatever the hell that was. Sighing, I get up and walk around the house. My stomach grumbles. Time for lunch, huh? Well, I guess it's time for old Chef Floyd to cook up a gourmet delicacy. Oh dear. What I is Chef Floyd going to make? I'm not sure. I walk over to the refrigerator and open the door. Chef Floyd RD. <laughs> Let's see, you could make a sandwich, you could microwave some eggs, or just go right for the mustard jar. Chef Floyd are me. Ha, that's better. It is better. Mm, let's microwave some eggs. You got it. This seems easy enough. I put some eggs in the microwave and set the timer. Hmm. Three minutes. I'm sure that hmm. 17 minutes wouldn't go well. No. Let's actually stick to one minute. One minute. That might minute. be runny, but that's okay. Yep. Oh. Hmm. The eggs come out pretty okay. They're a little bit rubbery, but I'm apathetic enough to hork them down. I finish my snack and walk around the house some more, bored. When's Amanda coming home? <laughs> what a busy life we have when we're not dad dating. Right? Oh! I just remembered something. When we were packing up the old house, we found an old basketball hoop and, that would hang off of a door. It would really bring the living room together. I wonder where I put that. I spend a couple of minutes poking around the new place until I find it. After installing it above one of the doors in the living room, I'm ready to dunk. Come on and slam! I take a leap from the free throw line and rocket that sucker down the net. The crowd goes wild. <sighs> <laughs> That's the crowd you see. Yeah. I mean, everybody does that, right? That, like, silent... I think so, yeah. ...quiet cheer. Yeah. And welcome to the jam. I pull up from the three-point line, breaking ankles and slink sinking a fadeaway. I'm... I don't know <laughs> the words I'm saying at all. And I forgot the rest of the words to the song. Those were pretty much all the words. I think so, yeah. Other than the word Space Jam. Yes, that's in there somewhere. Mm hmm No look behind the back hook shot. Everyone's on their feet. Something, something Space Jam. Yes. That's basically it. Right. I managed to just barely defeat myself at horse before Amanda comes home. Then we cook dinner together. We're proud of ourselves for not even coming close to burning down the house. Afterward, Amanda and I dig into a carton of ice cream over the episode, over an episode of Chopped Toddler Tournament. Oh dear. What you have in front of you is a molecularly deconstructed sweet potato with a brown sugar demi-glace with <laughs> creme fraiche, of course. This, this is, is, this is, oh, you wanted it? Go ahead. This is literally a jar of baby food. The toddler immediately bursts into tears. <laughs> Are we bad people for watching this? Yes. Just then, my computer dings. Huh? What's that? Oh, you probably just got a message. Amanda and I walk over to the computer and check dad book. It's a message from Robert. Finally. <laughs> you up? What are you doing? What oh. does that mean? What are you doing? Wow. <laughs> what am I doing? You're just chilling. Hmm, just chilling, watching TV with your daughter, or working on a motorcycle. Man, if I were only so cool. I will go with what Amanda said. Just chilling. There you go. I type back, just chillin'. Amanda <laughs> deletes the G and hits send. <laughs> It'll make you look cooler. A couple moments pass by. Another message pops up. Hey. Wanna grab a drink? Hey, that means he wants to hang out. I know what that means, Amanda. 
but it's kind of late. Come on, Pops. Live a little. I have... I just realized I've been looking around the screen for some indication of, like, what time of night it is. Mm-hmm. As if it would be there on the text message UI or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> I've just been subtly trying to figure out whether it was, like, 10 at night or, like, 1. <laughs> I am living with ice cream and traumatized toddlers. Ah. Well, it's your life, but I think you'd have a lot of fun tonight. You are trying to get to know the neighbors better, aren't you? Ugh, fine. I type back a message to Robert, asking him for details, and he tells me to meet him at Kim and Jim's. No, Jim and Kim's. <laughs> well, don't wait up for me. I never do. <laughs> I throw on a nice jacket and run out the door. It's only a short walk to Jim and Kim's, and it's a beautiful night. Ah, oh, how nice. See, last oh, time yay. I think, like, he just... Last time he straight did not answer us. Yeah, like, with the beginning of so that relieved. played out the same, but then we never got a follow-up, I think. And I was so happy and relieved because I was terrified of seeing him again. <laughs> well, thank goodness things have gone a little smoother this time. Yes. It's a different, different me, a different world, a different Robert. Yeah. It's wonderful. I walk into the bar and see the usual crowd of barflies drinking beer and watching sports. I spot Robert at the back of the bar and wave hi as I walk over. Hey man, how's it going? Hey buddy. Hmm. Ahoy there, Skipper. <laughs> <laughs> Look who's here. Robert and Mary are here? Uh-oh. Why uh-oh? I brought Mary along. Figured we needed a drinking buddy. I'm actually legitimately excited about this. <laughs> this will be fun. I think Mary is funny. Aw, oh, man. I was excited to get to know Robert a little better. Now I have to deal with this weird married lady making passes at me. You know what, Liam? You sure do. <laughs> we crashed Robert's date with Craig. That's true. Don't you get all bent out of shape over Robert bringing somebody out? It's only fair. Don't look so scared, kiddo. We're just having a drink. Oh. Yeah. Speaking of which, I think it's time for the first round. What are you having? Ah. Hmm. Beer, something tropical, or whiskey, straight up. Oh. That would be your actual answer, though. Yeah. A dad after my own heart, huh? Sorry. Robert orders three shots of whiskey and passes them between us. Well, this wasn't how I had expected my night to be going. Hey! Here's to bad decisions and relaxed moral values, fellas. <laughs> what have I gotten myself into? We all knock back the shots. I almost choke on the whiskey as it burns down my throat. I have to say, as much as I do enjoy whiskey, I, I think I've only done whiskey shots like two or three times total. Yeah, usually you go after like you're doing it more as a sipping drink. Yeah. Not as a, uh, yeah. I mean, I could totally drink a shot of whiskey, but I could also spend 30 minutes doing it and enjoy it just as much. Yeah. So. And why not do that? Make it last. Yeah, make it not hit my system quite so fast. Yeah. I'm a bit of a lightweight, so... Holy heck, that was a kick. I look over at Robert... Robert and Mary... Why are their names tripping me up? Like, is that the name of a college or something? I don't think so. William and Mary is. Oh. Weird. I look over at Robert and Mary, who seem like old pros at this. Robert grabs his jacket and throws it on. Uh, let's get marching. What? Never let them take you to a second location, Liam. <laughs> the night's young, Chief. Come on, we're bar hopping. Uh, oh. All right. Look at you having a night on the town. Jeez. We leave the bar and start walking down the street. I still don't know this area of town very well, so I just follow Robert. So, where are we headed? Hey. <gasps> Irish I were drinking. It's an Irish pub. That's, That's pretty good. Good. <laughs> good pun. A good pun is the whiskey to my heart. Come on. <laughs> oh, Mary. Puns are the lowest form of humor, humor Liam. Try harder. Puns are the highest form of humor, Liam. Liam, Mary, because they don't punch down. <laughs> I love puns. They're great. There are no 
there's nobody who's the butt of a pun. Mm. You know, like puns are funny for their own sake, not because they set someone on the outside of the joke. I suppose that's true. Ouch. Am I going to be the butt of the joke all night? Mm. Jesus, Mary. Put your fangs away for a second. We walk into Irish Eye We're Drinking. The pub is pretty much the same as Jim and Kim's, except for the old-timey Irish memorabilia on the wall. Next round. What are you having? Hmm. Do they make fruity Irish cocktails? Probably so, not. I realize that whiskey shots the whole night is probably not a good way to go. Right. I hate beer. Let's... I'm going to go ahead and say that I if you're doing whiskey this time, let this be the last bar you're doing whiskey at. Because, uh, And I don't know how many bar backgrounds they actually have in this game, so this may be the last bar. <laughs> True. I guess I'll do whiskey here. Yeah. Amanda's going to college. She needs to know how to take care of somebody who drank too much. That is true. There you go. We're such good dads. Let's do it. Robert orders three more glasses of whiskey, and we post up in a garish green booth. Mary slides in and sidles up next to Robert, which makes me breathe a sigh of relief. Huh. Let's sip this one, why don't we? Heck yeah. That's my hey. style. Suit yourself. Mary immediately downs her shot in one gulp and burps loudly. Hey. That'll put hair on your chest. You are truly the paragon of grace and beauty. Ah. Mary grabs my drink and sips it. That's mine. <laughs> mm -hmm. Hey. Ah. William, be a dear and get us another round, will you? Hmm. I don't know how to process this evening at all. I get up and order another round of drinks from the bartender. As I head back, I see Mary and Robert having a lively conversation. Robert roars with laughter. I don't think I've ever seen the guy smile, let alone laugh. I take a seat across the... I take a seat across the booth from them and pass out the drinks. I... So Edith's kid snuck some pot brownies onto the table at the last bake sale, right? And I spot that little hemp sweater, sweatshirted gremlin in the act, so I go up to Edith with a baggie, and I'm about to tell her when all of a sudden she just freaks out on me. You're ruining the bake sale, she says. I should have been PTA president. Your roots are bad, and blah blah blah. What? Mm -hmm. So what'd you do? I told her to have a brownie and that everything was going to be fine. <laughs> 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 they both erupt in laughter. I politely follow along with the story. She ate three. Oh my gosh. <laughs> More laughter. Okay, that was actually pretty funny. Uh? She called the cops and told them that time had stopped. Oh no. <sighs> Mary looks directly at me. Do you smoke weed? What? Mm. You know, the devil's lettuce. <laughs> I... I have two big fat blunts in my purse right now. You want to blaze? Uh... Okay. <laughs> hmm. Oh, I just parsed that none of these answers are yes. <laughs> um... So let's see. What? No... Well, I think, I think I want to go with you with the feds. That one, yeah, that one will be a fun playing it off way to go. Yeah. Um, I see Liam as the kind of person who probably has tried cannabis before. For sure. But. Yeah. Already had some drinks. Have a daughter at home. Yeah. Yep. You with the feds? I worked hard for what I have. And no two-bit corner boy is going to drop the dime on me. So you take what you're pushing somewhere else, and I'll keep running my business the way I want to run it. What? Remember, you come at the king, you best not miss. Jesus, kid, dial it back. <laughs> Have you even seen that show? It's The Wire, Mary. It's so good! Watch TV. <laughs> Robert giggles helplessly. 
<laughs> I'm just kidding, cowboy. Mm -hmm. Lay off the kid, Mary. <laughs> he might not be used to your brand of humor. Mm. Fine, fine. Mary's clearly not used to my brand of humor. That was great. <laughs> <laughs> Laugh, all of you. Well, Robert is. Robert Aww. did. Robert gets it. We sit around and sip our drinks, people watching and cracking jokes. After a little bit of time, I begin to warm up to Mary. Her jokes become much funnier and much less scary. But it seems like she's not going anywhere anytime soon. I just wanted some alone time with Robert. I wonder if I can get her to leave somehow. Hmm. Isn't Joseph wondering where you are? Lots of eligible bachelors around here, huh? Or could you get the next round? That's the one. Yeah, it is. You trying to ditch me, pal? I... no. Because if you're trying to ditch me, you can just tell me to scram. I just... No, no, it's fine. Liam wants some alone time with his new best buddy, Robert. Read you loud and clear. The wingman breaks formation to pursue their prey. Hey. Hmm. Now, if you fellas will excuse me, Mary needs to sink her teeth into a helpless boy. Oh, jeez. Go with God. Nice seeing you. Ugh. Deuces, nerds. <laughs> Mary gets up and saunters over to a younger-looking guy at the bar. Hey. She grows on you. Does she, though? <laughs> I feel like she kind of delights in making men suffer. Oh. Well, she does. But what about her and Joseph? Hmm. What about him? You know, they're married and she definitely tried to get in my pants the other night and I gesture to her across the bar where she's making goo goo eyes at that young guy from before. He looks like he's being held hostage. Hey. Oh, that's just a thing she does. She's harmless. Tell that to the boy she's hanging off of. The poor kid looks like he's seen war. <laughs> oh, yeah. Robert lets out a hearty laugh. Hey, I got him to laugh. You did oh. it. Oh, man. You know I pegged you for one of those straight-laced types. Oh, don't worry. I got pretty wild back in my day. Mm. Yeah. Still got a little wild in you? <laughs> <laughs> I have a child I need to care for. It's very true. What do we say? Mm. You know it, or there's so much wild in me. Or, apparently, definitely not. <laughs> I feel like that would kind of end the evening. Probably would. And with Robert, maybe that's the right choice to make. <laughs> it's your call. Um. Place his hand on head. There's so much wild in this puppy. <laughs> <sighs> I think I'll go with you know it. There you like, go. I'm not actually going to be that wild. I just want to pretend for a minute like I could be. Sure. <laughs> Robert orders a couple more rounds of shots. I gulp. What am I getting myself into? Oh, dear. Think you can go shot for shot? Robert, I'm easily, like... I easily weigh a third less than you. Yeah, you've seen our character art. We're very little. There's only one way to look cool here. I grab the shot closest to me and down it. Robert looks impressed. He takes his shot and knocks it back. Mm -hmm. That's one. So... What do I even talk about? He's so cool. And he probably hates small talk. Uh, so how are... Things? Nailed it. I, I hate small talk. Okay. Hmm. Too many people, and this isn't necessarily you, but too many people think that they have to fill the dead air with noise. Personally, I think they're afraid of the silence. Or they're afraid of what the other person's gonna think of the silence. Or they legitimately want to connect with another human being and sitting in silence staring at each other doesn't really cut it? Yeah, Robert. Oh. If you want some unsolicited advice, just learn to be comfortable with silence. Mm. Nothing wrong with two people sitting in silence and drinking whiskey. Oh. All right. Oh. Robert and I sit in silence and drink whiskey. I take in the rest of the bar. Patrons laughing, playing darts, spilling beer, Mary giving the hard sell to that young man. The young man pretending that he got a phone call from one of his friends. Huh. 
Maybe silence is nice sometimes. So, you ever kill a man? I choke on my drink. <laughs> Excuse me? Oh? You know, watch the life drain from someone's eyes. It's not just their life, you know. It's their hopes and dreams draining away. Every memory and experience they've ever had. Gone. Uh, no. Hey. Great. Me neither. Robert knocks back his shot and motions for me to do the same. I reciprocate. Mm -hmm. I'm just messing with you. Relax. See, that's not... That's not super funny, because now I'm legit thinking about how sad that is. And I'm not having a fun time sipping whiskey in a bar with a friend. I'm, like, contemplating how depressing it is that people kill each other, and how much we lose when people die, and... Dang, thanks, Robert. Oh. I laugh nervously. Or am I? I laugh nervously again. We sip more whiskey and people watch some more. Mary has her sights set on another man after the other one excused himself to the bathroom. And, I assume, crawled out the window. Gosh, this whiskey's hitting me hard. Gosh, <laughs> this whiskey's hitting me hard. You betcha. Robert gets up out of the booth and shoulders his jacket. Let's roll. Huh. Sorry, whiskey. Inside voices. <laughs> <laughs> Let's roll. Wait, what about Mary? Huh. Brother, Mary's going to be just fine. I look over at Mary, who's lying on the bar in front of some poor sap. She's singing happy birthday to him while he insists that it's not his birthday. <laughs> We make our way out of the bar and back onto the street. I'm trying my hardest not to stumble, but man, the sidewalk is just coming right at me. I hope Robert doesn't notice me tripping over my own feet like this is the first time I've ever been drunk. Where to? Mm -hmm. You'll see. I follow Robert through the street lamp spotlights until we eventually arrive at a rundown strip mall. There's a beauty salon, a sex shop, a computer repair store that looks like it's been closed for 10 years, and finally, a liquor store. Oh. Wait here. I'll be right back. After a minute, Robert returns with two bottles, two wine bottles in brown paper bags. He hands one to me. Cheers. <laughs> I'm kind of a three drinks a night girl. <laughs> <laughs> um... This is intimidating. Can people actually put away this much? Uh, some people can. Whoa. He Not said probably without, like, feeling some major effects later, but, yeah. Dang. He sits on the curb and drinks. He motions for me to do the same. This is really not where I expected the night to go. I take a sip. <laughs> White Zinfandel? What? Nothing. I just wasn't expecting... It is delicious, fruity, and refreshing. Don't judge me. I start to say something, think of his lecture about valuing silence earlier, and stop. I sit on my wine and watch cars drive by. Huh. Let's throw rocks at shit. Buddy? We aren't... 13. <laughs> Why are we drinking outside of a liquor store and wanting to throw rocks at things? What? <laughs> Robert suddenly hurls a rock at a stop sign. The ding echoes through the empty parking lot. Mm -hmm. That felt good. He presses a stone into my free hand. Now you try. Uh, I don't know. Oh. With feeling. I look at the rock in my hand and look at the stop sign. Back at the rock, back at the stop sign. I know what has to be done. You adopt your daughter's words, say you're sorry, or say this one's for you, Pappy. I'll take my daughter's words. I like it. I got a problem with authority. <laughs> I got a problem with authority. I hurl the rock at the sign. It sails over the stop sign right into the window of a parked car, leaving a crack. Really? Dude, run. I leap up and dart into the nearest alleyway, wine in hand. I can hear Robert's footsteps behind me. 
after I'm sure I'm far enough away from the cracked window that I am no longer culpable for this heinous crime, I stop to catch my breath. Mm -hmm. Maybe we strike rock throwing from the to-do list. You think? Agreed. Suddenly, my stomach growls. Oh man, I am starving. Uh, let's get pizza. I can't argue with that. Where's good around here? Actually, I don't even care if it's good. Just needs to be edible and in my mouth in the next five minutes. Mm, I know just the place. I follow Robert through a, a maze of alleys and side streets until we eventually end up in front of a tiny hole in the wall pizza joint. The bright neon red sign reads, Pete's Pizza Pizza. <laughs> Pete's Pizza Pizza. That's rough. It is hard to say. Ta-da! I can see a few exhausted-looking workers behind the counter, tossing dough and pulling piping hot pizzas right out of stone, of a stone ovens. My stomach rumbles again. We go up to the counter and get ready to order. Can I get two slices of Hawaiian pizza? Oh, wait, Liam, are you, you're cool with pineapple on your pizza, right? I mean... Sure. You are very hungry. And me, in the real world, I've never had a Hawaiian pizza, I don't think. You know, I'm not sure I've ever actually tried it either. Hmm. I'd give it a shot. We made a min... Mm, I can say words. <laughs> Three whiskeys. We... Yeah. We wait a minute or two. We wait... Wow. Wow. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> we wait a minute for our pizza to come out of the oven. I'm practically drooling at the smell. The cashier hands us an, a giant slice on a paper plate so saturated with grease that I'm worried it'll fall apart. We take our pizzas outside and wander through the alleyways as we eat. I take a bite. It's absolutely delicious. Pineapple is truly the best pizza topping. Mm, you said it. I don't know if that's true, but sure. Man, I feel way better now. Mm, you and me both. We hear noise coming out of a slightly ajar door in the alleyway. Robert looks at me excitedly. Mm -hmm. Got any more of that wild in you? <laughs> <laughs> hmm. We did tell her not to wait up, and she is an adult. Mm -hmm. But I wonder. Should we be getting back to her? I think we're fine to keep going with our evening. It's what she'd want. She'd be so proud of us. She would be. We've committed crimes. We're getting drunk. We've gotten Hawaiian pizza. She would be impressed. I'm going to go with you, Betcha. There you go. Good on you. I'm making a very good impression on Robert this playthrough. You certainly are. Robert and I slide the door open and peek inside. It's completely dark except for some flickering light. We slowly creep forward, cautious not to be heard or seen. <gasps> Shh! Don't shush me so loud. Shh! We come to the end of a hallway and find ourselves standing in front of a movie screen. Oh, this suddenly makes sense. Did we really just sneak into a movie theater like a couple of teenagers? No talking during the movie. We did, and we brought our bag wine with us. Mm-hmm. We look into the audience and are surprised to find that it's almost completely empty, save for a, a row of a few teenagers in the front. They look annoyed when they notice us. They're just angry that we snuck in the same way they did. Mm -hmm. Robert starts making his way to the very back of the theater, and I follow him. We settle in with our wines and try to make some sense of this movie. It's a romantic comedy, I think. A young man is frantically trying to get through New York to find the woman he's finally realized he's in love with. Kiss already! There's nobody to kiss yet. You want him to just kiss the taxi driver? Hell yeah. <laughs> the kids down the way notice us heckling. One of them speaks up. Hey man, keep it down. Oh damn, that's Ernest Hemingway, Hugo's kid. Ernest! Hey, Ernest! I know you! It's me! Your neighbor! Hi! <laughs> Ernest turns back around, embarrassed. Good play. 
I turn back to Robert. <laughs> he kissed anyone yet? It turns out that yes, he did kiss someone. He made his way out onto a tiny island near New York to profess his love for a woman who was, for some reason, who for some reason he knew would be there. She tells him that they hit the jackpot. He said that they had, but I think there was some subtext there that I'm missing. Boo! Love is dead. Shut up, it's beautiful! No, you shut up! Ernest grumbles. The credits start to roll. I stand up, and Robert immediately pulls me back down. Hundreds of people worked very hard to make this film happen, and you're going to sit here and appreciate them. Yes. <laughs> Good on you, Robert. Okay. Look at that. Elizabeth Shelton. She worked really hard. I bet she did lots of good uh, wardrobe design. Thank you, Elizabeth Shelton, for this beautiful film-going experience. And Peter Anders. Catering. Fed a bunch of people so they could have the energy to do their jobs. What a guy. We let the credits roll while Robert individually thanks every member of the crew. Once it's finally over, and he makes sure no animals were harmed in the making of this film, we leave the movie theater. We stumble into the theater parking lot, polishing off the rest of our wine. Hey, assholes! Out of nowhere, a rock flies through the air and hits me on the knee. My knee! What the hell? Ernest and his friends stand in the alleyway, blocking our exit. Oh, what do you guys want? Why'd you go and throw a rock at my knee? This is my good knee. My orthopedist is going to be pissed. Ernest tosses another rock up and down in his hands. What's wrong with this kid? You ruined my theater-going experience. Now you have to pay. Oh, well, I don't have any cash on me right now, and, like, movies got really expensive... Ernest tucks another rock at my other knee. I'm able to jump out of the way, but I didn't properly stretch before physical activity, and I'm probably going to feel super sore in the morning. Oh. We ruined it for you? That movie was pretty crappy in the first place. Hey, you take that back. That was a beautiful love story with really genuine acting. You call that good acting? What classicist mainstream slop have you been served your whole entire life? What? Really? Have you ever even seen any Michael Powell? A Matter of Life and Death, 1946? Easily the toughest five minutes of love you'll ever witness. Listen, man. Excuse me? No, you listen. That popcorn-ass drivel the mass media is shoving down your throat will only make you dumber and sadder. You of all people should strive for a higher standard in the art you consume. Your name's Ernest Hemingway, for Christ's sakes. Mm. Oh no, now you've done it. Ernest rushes Robert, screaming like a banshee. Ah! I dive between Ernest and Robert, trying to stop the kid. He lunges forward, kicking me as hard as he can in the knee. Always the knees. <laughs> F my knee! <laughs> Robert gets in between Ernest and myself. It's as if he's seeing red. So many beeps. <laughs> F my f***ing knee hurts. Excuse me, friend. All right, buddy. Talk like punk. Get hit like a punk. Robert squares up in a boxer stance. Queensbury rules. Three minute rounds with one minute rest in between. No low blows, fish hooks, J grabs, or high blows. What? What? And don't even think about pulling an illegal turn style. That's an automatic deduction of three points. I... What? You'll have to designate a second if you're unable to fulfill your role as main duelist. One of your friends over there looks like he has enough youthful vivacity to handle it. Hey man, I don't want to get dragged into this. That that movie sucked. <laughs> it's too late. You two are blood bound. If he dies, you die. Sorry, I don't make the rules. Talk to Queensbury. We're just gonna go. Ernest and his friends warily back away. Robert calls after them. The Queensbury Association will hear about this and consume better content. Once the teens are safely out of earshot, Robert turns to me. Were you about to actually fight that kid? Mm, you're kidding me? I'd never hit a child. That'd be despicable. Oh. You throw the rules at him, though. They always they always bolt. Nobody wants a Queensbury-sanctioned throwdown. Oh. 
but full disclosure, I made half of that up. Wow. Oh. See, you don't even have to know the rules, you just make them up. <laughs> Come on, let's get out of here. <sighs> My knees. Your knees. <laughs> Robert and I cool down a bit as we walk back to the neighborhood. I'm so sorry. I get really into the art of filmmaking when I drink. It's okay. I think it's cool how much you like movies. To be honest, I don't know a lot about them myself. Buddy, I got so much to show you. You ever see any Sam Fuller? I haven't. <sighs> Fuller is cash. See, thanks for defending my honor. Thanks for the dinner and a movie. Thanks for the adventure. Thanks for the dinner and a movie is a very cute flirt. And I do like it. It is pretty good. Mm -hmm. Should I go for it? And in a way, it's almost understating that this was, like, to thank him it's for the making... adventure would be to imply that this was wild and not just Tuesday. <laughs> Fair. <laughs> Dinner was $4 and the movie was free, but you got it. Robert throws an arm around my shoulder and we drunkenly belt out tunes all the way back. We finally get to his doorstep. Oh boy. This was an interesting night. I liked it. A smile forms on his cheeks. A rare sight. <sighs> Let's hang out again soon, yeah? Yeah. I linger there for a second, swaying drunkenly in the night breeze. Robert claps me on the shoulder. Yeah. Night, bud. Robert heads back inside, and I stumble my way back home. We're going to have a lot of explaining to do. <laughs> For why we can't walk? For why our knees are both falling off? Uh, we nearly fought a child. We, uh... We didn't, though. Snuck into a movie. In Only a little bit. Only the tail got end of the pretty drunk. <laughs> but that's just a Tuesday night. And it's a rank S night, so we did very good, is the thing. Yay! Yay, we did it. We did we it. We finally went on a Robert date. We did it. Ha, we did it. Hooray. Man, we did a Robert date and it didn't end terribly. And yeah. Yeah. Good I'd say this us. has been a productive date night episode. <laughs> Thank you all very much for watching and we'll see you again for more Dream Daddy later. Goodbye. Goodbye. Goodbye.